Welcome to Build with Rob. It's your boy, Rob Deerdeck. You know what it is. CEO and founder of the Deerdeck Machine, a one of a kind venture creation studio where we systematically fuse art, science, and magic to manufacture manufacture amazing amazing everything and anything in any which way but loose thank you to every single person who has ever listened to this show um appreciate you uh of course wherever you listen to the show like subscribe be all about it you want to be a guest on this show uh go to deerdeckmachine.com make a video Let's get together. Let's talk life and business. You know, you got a business idea. Pitch us at Deer Deck Machine. Uh, you want to be part of our consumer collaborator group, The Machinist. Go to DeerDeckMachine.com. Get together with us. Let's be together. Let's do this thing together. Let's enjoy this process. Let's go through it. Become part of the machine method. Develop a machine mindset. Get with this machine lifestyle. Uh, it's so systematic. It's so systematic. Uh, and look, today's a, a, another uh, unique episode. Uh, have no guests today, no do or die or founders as we have from time to time, no uh, inspired entrepreneurs that, that just want to talk life and business strategy. Instead, it's just me, um, you know, talking strategy all together, you know, in, in, and one thing that I am, and one one reason that I listen to podcasts and I listen to um, audio books and and read books and man, you know, go to um, you know seminars and different workshops and different things is like I am a lifelong learner, you know. And for me, it's like learning, growing, and evolving is the absolute cornerstone of being successful in any aspect of life, you know, and, and then to me, you know, I go the second layer deeper, uh, is if you can point your, um, what you want to learn towards mastery, then create a systematic approach of evolving towards that mastery, boy, that's when that growth really kicks in, um, and, and can produce an output that's, that is the extraordinary life or extraordinary success. But, you know, one thing that I think people have to realize, like, you know, you're going to, go out and absorb all this information. You're listening to this show, you're reading books, you're uh, listening to other podcasts and looking for uh, sort of information and in inspiration that you can now take forward. And, and just know that you're not looking to listen to, to every word in this podcast or read a book and understand every single word in that book and it change your life. You know, you are simply looking for new ideas that you can now add to your toolkit that can help elevate and evolve your mindset that pushes you forward depending on what stage of life that you're at. And in one of the biggest and most important things as it relates to listening to podcasts or, or um, you know, reading books is that it's action and application over everything. You know, it's like too many people like, you know, get fired up and motivated by listening to other successful people share sh strategies or read an amazing book that inspires them. But then they don't take the action and apply what they've learned uh, in order to turn it into a more subconscious and intuitive uh, piece of who they are. Uh, that is evolving them towards being successful and realizing whatever it is um, is success to them. And, and, and to me, it's this remarkable, remarkable thing, man, it, it, especially as it relates to certain things in my life that have been incredibly impactful, um, you know, and especially as it relates to books, right? Like I have, you know, um, read so many different books that have been extraordinarily impactful in, in, in my life and think and grow rich and good to great. And, and all of these, these, the richest man in Babylon and most recently the science of getting rich and, um, you know, uh, you know, all of these books, 
And, and the most fascinating thing um, that has happened to me in recent time is I started rereading these books. I started rereading these books. And man, it is, it might as well be, I might as well have never read these books in my life. I might as well, it might as well have been the first time. And it really, what was the most shocking to me and, and what I realized was, wow, you know, I'm, I look at this world and I'm constantly learning and evolving, but depending on where I am at, what stage of life I am in, what depth of knowledge I have in any particular subject, um, how evolved I am as it relates to personal development. When I actually read that book, what it actually gave me is so much different than when I, I read the book 10 years later. And, and you know, depending on, you know, uh, the different books and I, and look, I recently, so far this year, that that's all the books that I've read this year, um, you know, uh, getting caught up on is, and where this sort of idea had, had hit me of like, wow, it's like, man, you really are, uh, growing and evolving at such a rate that like, you know, even where a lot of the sources of your knowledge you were only able to absorb some of the basic parts of it because that was the stage that your mind was at when you read it. And, and I think Think and Grow Rich, you know, it, it, it felt to me like I had never read the book. And, and it's, it's really funny because I'm in the Think and Grow Rich movie. I'm in the Think and Grow Rich movie and they Think and Grow Rich to me right into that movie. It's like at the time, um, you know, they were all over me to be in the documentary. And I was like, I just don't have time. I just don't have time. It's just not something I'd want to do. And I was, you know, the book had made an impact on me in my twenties, but I hadn't like read it for so long that I didn't, I didn't really fully connect with it. I don't think, um, you know, the way that I do now, like now I look at it like, wow, this thing is like pure, timeless, like truly, um, like, you know, the cornerstone of personal development and success in all aspects of life. And, and when I'm, I, they actually sent me an original copy of a 1932 original edition signed by Napoleon Hill as a gift to like, this is just for you, hoping you would reconsider um, being in the movie. And oh, I was like, mm, man, original copy, 1932 original copy, man, I really want that, but I don't got time for this. I don't think I want to be in this movie. And then I reread the book and man, it was like, wow, it, it, it hit me so hard on like reinforcing so much of the stuff that I had evolved into over the years and, and, and how much and how important that was as, as a piece of work and including even, you know, there's a, there's a, a chapter called about sexual transmutation and this idea of like, um, how an older man, uh, after like when he can transfer sort of his chase for women to his chase for success, like, like, you know, men, uh, 40 and above, that made no sense to me in 20. I'm like, this is why this got a little creepy over here. But at 40, I'm like, oh, I get that. Oh, I get this one now. Um, but I'm, uh, decided from them very, very smart on their behalf because I did say no multiple times and then they did send me a signed copy. And then I want, I did want that signed copy, but I felt I couldn't open the box and take it unless I committed. So I reread the book, committed to doing it. Um, and now I have this amazing signed copy that I have forever and will cherish forever. And I've been in the movie, which is an amazing, um, opportunity to, to be able to share philosophy. And one of the very first things that I did, um, before going into, you know, doing a lot of podcasts and doing my own podcast, but, you know, you know, cut to five years later, I read it again. I mean, it might as well have been, I might as well have never read it. I might as well have never read it. It made such an impact again on me, um, you know, in, in a new and different way, right? The mastermind uh, chapter and the importance of like, 
like developing masterminds to connect with that can help accelerate what it is you're hoping to achieve. I, I, I looked right through that in my 20s and, and in my late 30s before reading it again and just bam, like, oh, another significant sort of evolution in my mind. And, 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 it, and again, what it, what it made me realize is you're just not capable of retaining every bit of information that, that you pull in and take. And you have to be smart enough to, to look for the gems that you are now going to apply uh, to your life. And, and again, apply what is something you can pull from this podcast when you listen to it, the book that you read, that you can actually now take action on and apply to your life? Because again, it's the only way that it can be actually um, part of your actual evolution and makeup and part of your new skill set, you know? And um, for me, like, it was sort of eye opening, but then it was like, okay what else, what else can I reread to really uh, see what type of impact this would have on me? And, and we had a guest on the show, um, you know, B Benji Miller, uh, from system and soul, who was a guest on the show, uh, when I was going through his website and looking at, looking at his, everything that he was doing and, and how he, uh, sort of helped his clients. And, and part of it was the hedgehog. And I was like, oh, like, I love the hedgehog. And he was like, oh, um, I, um, I didn't create that. That's actually from good to great. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, it, it hit me so hard. And I was like, you know, in the show, I don't remember what I said exactly. Um, but I was like, I was like, man, um, like that makes me, that makes me really, um, you know, realize how much like I probably didn't remember or apply from good to great, you know, and, and, you know, it made me, you know, think to myself, okay, I gotta, I gotta take the time right now and, and get good to great into, into the rotation, uh, in order to kind of see like, Hey, it felt like it really impacted me on in 2012, but I'm, I just, I'm, I really just remembered one main thing. That was this idea of, of, um, you know, get all the right people on the bus, you know, and, and to me, you know, again, I'm shooting this show and, and, you know, I saw the hedgehog, which I clearly read about and saw, you know, 10 years earlier and did not remember. And then was, you know, doing my own show inspired by a guest to, to go back and revisit, uh, you know, this sort of timeless work about, about business and, and, and set off to, to, to read the book again. And wow. Wow. Hello. What? I, like, I thought it was an amazing book in 2012 and it had this big impact on, on me, but reading it again, it's like, this is one of the most genius works of art and business in history. And, and it was truly as if I, the only, there might as well have been one sentence, get, get all, get all the good, you know, get everybody on the bus is like basically all that I, I even gathered from it back then, because you got to think my, my skill set, my, my systems, my way of life, my way of thinking, the way I managed people, the way I was building my life, my companies, everything was complete and utter chaos complete and other chaos, man. I was, I would just do company after company, you know, I'd show on multiple different shows. Like I would just work real hard, party real hard. Like I was just in absolute and total chaos. And, and to give you context in 2012, how I was as a, a manager, um, like everyone that worked for me, we had to eventually create a code word for when I was going too hard, when I would just be going off because something wasn't done right or the way that I expected or just going too hard on, um, 
going to look, I, I pause because it makes me laugh. It makes me laugh thinking how like like peaceful and harmonious and happy and balanced um, that I live today and and how um, you know I'm, I'm managed with with deep purpose and 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 trying to be incredibly thought, thoughtful with everybody that I work with and and how do we get to continually evolving our relationship and growing growing the vision together back then boy man i i would just lose it lose it over I, and i it's hard for me to even think that i would be getting that aggressive but i was would get so angry and so aggressive um in that era that that we had to have a code word we had to develop a code word and the code word was broken crown the people that work for me would have to say like broken crown, broken crown. And it'd be like, oh, 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 oh. I'd like snap back into like, oh man, I was going too hard. Yeah, I guess I was just yelling at everybody there. Like, and and so, you know, as as probably hard for people to imagine, um, that was sort of my mindset and the way that I lived in, in total and complete chaos back in 2012. Um, when I read the book, you know, and, and even, even when I, I read the, the book back then, it's still not enough of it could, could sink with me because my, my mind and the way that I had developed and evolved and grown as a business person was still like, so very, very, um, in this i the in this concept of like, you just work as hard as you can and, and eventually, uh, you'll find success because that's that's how it kept working for me, and so I would just keep working as hard as possible. And when things weren't working, and and there was all this stress and chaos connected for it, it would then I would just have these breaking points, and and sort of the the breakthrough at the time when I read it was this concept of you know how important um, you know getting the right people on the bus. And then I'm like, okay, that's, that's what connected with me. And then I went on this journey to try to get all the right people on the bus. But, but since I was so, you know, limited in my understanding of what that meant, I thought I could just hire anybody and put them all together and then they would help me figure everything out. And, and it did not work. It actually was the the opposite effect because I didn't have a full and complete understanding of what it is I was hoping to achieve. Um, I was just putting people on the bus that, that I thought were close of like, hey, can you get me there? And they're like, well, where do you want to go? I'm like, I don't know. I put you on the bus to get me there. And like, well, no, we got to know where you want the bus to go. And it's like, no, I thought that's not how it works. I got to get you on the bus and you're going to take me there. Um, and and it 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 sort of soured the concept of what the book was to me. And at the end of the day, despite it having this sort of uh, profound impact on me and making me think differently about, um, about who uh, I created and built with and who I hired, it still had a limited like long-term impact because my mind was only able to put that one piece uh, of the puzzle to work, you know. And now, fast forward ten years later, and and listening to the book, and hearing the depth of the concept, and uh, level five leadership, and culture of discipline, and and just sort of, uh, you know, truly what the hedgehog is um, in the idea that, like, what are you deeply passionate about? What can you be best in the world at? And what drives the economic engine? Like, it's just beyond genius. And then the idea of, like, creating the flywheel. Like, I am saying that reading it again after 10 years had such a, pro a profound impact on me that I just immediately began to strategize of all of the things that I was going to begin to, to eliminate from the way that I had built the Deer Deck Machine to this point. Um, uh, eliminate so many things that were sort of on the fringe of, of, 
um, taking mind share energy and time that did not connect back to um, what am I deeply passionate about and what can I be the best in the world at and how does it drive the economic engine? It, it, it's, it's that truth of what the hedgehog is um, really, really, uh, again, um, was just this slight tool that allowed me to go clean up like a bunch of different ventures I was working on as they were not the right fit clean up the visions inside the company, uh, drive further uh, to automation and quantification inside the business and and getting clarity on on the divisions and how, um, you know, splitting the company up into the machine mindset and Rob Dyrdek's integrated philosophy of life and business and the machine method and the mastery of, of uh, curating ideas and individuals and building profitable, sustainable businesses, um, like, you know, really, really uh, becoming the best in the world at taking, um, you know, uh, visionary ideas and shaping them into profitable, sustainable businesses uh, is, is what we know uh, that we can do. And getting them to profitable and sustainable was this new unlock that I got from from reading Good to Great again. You know, it really, really honed in on like, hey, we want the very best entrepreneurs in the world. We want to create this system that gives this this um, much more predictable path to success. We want to be there to, uh, help amplify. We want to provide capital on all the stages to really now drive to profitability, sustainability that then gives the flexibility on whether or not we want to continue to grow or be acquired. Um, but it just gave me even further clarity of how, um, we are going to be the best in that, why it's what we absolutely love to do, and ultimately how committing capital um, at a much larger level and, and a fewer amount of companies is how we're actually going to become great, how we're going to go from good to great, you know? And, and like, boy, it, it just instantaneously from revisiting an existing book that I already read and thought I got enough out of by rereading it in, in one afternoon helped me completely codify and, and the vision for the machine and ultimately make it a stronger, better company and, and stronger, clearer vision overnight when it already had a pretty substantially clear, evolved, optimized version. Um, but you never stop learning and evolving. And, and I didn't need to get every single thing out of the book. You know, I didn't need to have, you know, there's so many layers that that book goes into because it's more geared towards, um, you know, more public companies and that sort of aspect. I only needed a handful of ideas that I could take and apply uh, to sort of my evolution. And, and I just really implore to anybody when you're looking at um, why, why you are listening to a podcast, why you are reading a book, um, why you are doing it. You are doing it because you are trying to gain further knowledge um, and ultimately you're just hunting these little pieces that you can add to your overall system that you don't have to think about and draw up anymore, that they actually become more intuitive and a part of who you are so that like it is now... Um, what makes up your new level and your new skill set, you know, and in, in approaching life in that lens, like looking at every time you read anything, every time you listen to anything, you are just looking for one other 
sort of bit of information that you can put in the toolbox. And then again, you have to take action and apply it, you know, because, you know, it, you can spend so much time uh, in school. You can learn. You can you can do all of these things and go to workshops and and get together with mastermind groups and talk philosophy and and you could jump from this podcast to another pod. You go from thing to thing to thing and and be inspired. But it is worthless if you do not take action and apply and uh, what you have learned and then ultimately see how it actually works and then learn to use it over and over again till it ultimately becomes an invaluable piece of who you are and what you have become. So look, you know, it, every book you've ever read, I'm telling you, it is a magical experience if you go out and reread it. Anything that that you really felt that inspired you over the last 10 years that you thought was like highly impactful to you, I really suggest you go out um, and, and listen to it again because you'll be um, blown away by how much different like uh, it is to hear it all these years later. But you'll also feel in the realest way how much you have evolved and grown. And, and, and how much this actual work or book that you read can make an impact on you again. Um, because it's hard um, to really understand and describe uh, how much you have evolved and who you have become and how much you have learned unless you go through exercises like these to, that make it really clear and apparent um, and, and this is one that I think is worth everybody, um, going out and doing, you know, I promise you, if you go, uh, pick the, the, the five books that's impacted you the most over the last 10 years, and you reread them today, you will not only, uh, be blown away by how much more information and how much more applicable that book is to your life today, but you will also be incredibly impressed with how far you have come and evolved uh, as a human being, as a uh, entrepreneur or business person. And that is that is uh, a lot of fun and really enjoyable to do. Trust me, I, I, I'm next one I'm doing is Seven Highly Habits of Successful People. That's like the first one I read when I was like 19, and like I I, I was thinking about on the way in here of like when I was like, okay, what what's another one that I need to do? And I I feel like like. I think I know what that book is and what it what it meant to me, but but given that it sold like you know a hundred million copies and been in print for uh, however many years, like I know that I'm about to go on another journey of having my mind blown uh, by rereading that book. So look, that's what it's about: continual growth, uh, but action and application with every single thing that you have learned. Um, I hope I hope you all go out and do it. I know you'll enjoy it. Okay, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, listening to another episode with Build with Rob. You know I love doing it. I just love talking all things life and business strategy. Love to do this show. Again, wherever you listen to it, like, subscribe, leave a comment, whatever it may be. You want to be part of the machine method, go to Dyrdek Machine. Uh, become a machinist uh, you want to be on the show go to dirtickmachine.com uh, pitch us an idea uh, send us your questions be a guest let's talk life and business because you know what it's about it's about seeing the future creating the plan and taking action Till next time see it believe it do it <laughs>